defeat us, Phelps. I came here to talk about asthma. That's right, asthma. Oh, asthma yeah. is inside you, in your lungs. Ah, All right? If you're lungs. watching this video, you've probably got asthma, but you're not alone. Did you know that one in ten Australian adults have asthma? And mm -hmm. one in five children in Australia have I asthma. I are a children. Well, you might be one of the four. Uh, are you one of the adults? I am. I've had it since I was a kid. Have you? Yep. Asthma? Yep. I've had it all my life. And I have, it hasn't stopped me from doing all the things I want to do. You know Gavin Brown? Collingwood footballer. Famous Collingwood footballer. Yes, it's Collingwood forever. The Maggies. We know how to play the game. That's right. He's an asthmatic. Is he? Yeah. Um, I was about eight or nine years of age uh, when I realised I, I first had asthma. And um, I think I first noticed it when I, uh, when I was sleeping one night and uh, I had trouble breathing. Um, I seemed to be wheezing a lot and really having trouble uh, sucking in air. So uh, I ran out to mum and, uh, and told her my problem. Well, I, when I first found out I had asthma because I was born with asthma, my parents um, straight away put me into swimming lessons. Hi, I'm Steve Mortimer. And like Susie and Gavin, I'm an asthmatic. But that didn't stop me playing for the Canterbury Bankstown Rugby League Club and also for my country and allowing me to do the things I want to do after football. Hang on, I'm a bit confused. Right. Can you please tell me what is asthma? What is asthma? Well, simply put, it means breathing difficulty. Breathing difficulty? Yeah. You mean like with your, that pipe that goes down or right down in your lungs? Like yeah, that, yeah. That All right, this is what pipe. happens. Let's, let's pretend that your lungs are like a tree. Okay. 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 All right. Let's pretend that this single tube here is your windpipe. Windpipe. Right? That is the windpipe. That's, That's the trunk. Wind pipe. That's the trunk. Okay. Now imagine if your trunk gets more narrow and more narrow, so less air can get in and out. You start to go. <laughs> That's right. You start to wheeze and stuff like that. Yeah, know? I always have to do right. wheeze before I go so out. Let's, let's stick with the tree. The tree has yeah. branches. Yes. Yeah. And they. Oh, I know. And they go down to um air sacs. Your air sacs. That's the leaves. leaves. Yes. The yes. Leaves. Okay. <laughs> Now your air sacs are what make, brings the oxygen in and lets the carbon dioxide go out. Ah, all right. Oh, all right. I get it. But why do you get asthma? Well, let's say that um, you and I, who are, have asthma, we have much more sensitive air tubes than normal. Yeah, but sensitive to what? I don't understand. Well, Peter, please, I don't understand. Well, listen, more sensitive. and we, we overreact to things like what we call triggers. Triggers? Yeah. Oh, I know what they are. Things like cold air. Pollen, dust mites, cigarette smoke, exercise, pets. My asthma is triggered off by smog in the city and sometimes cold air at night. If it's really bad, I start getting very wheezy and a little bit tight in the chest. So what happens to you during an asthma attack? And this is what happens. When a trigger such as pollen or cigarette smoke gets into your sensitive air tubes, it causes the muscles around them to tighten, your air tubes become narrow, and the air can't move freely through them, making breathing difficult, and you experience tightness in the chest, shortness of breath, and wheezy breathing. As your asthma gets worse, your air tubes become inflamed and swollen and clog up with mucus. Now, all this inflammation, swelling, and mucus makes your air tubes even narrower, and it's even more difficult to breathe. Oh, yuck. It's not very good, is it? No, it can get worse if you don't control it. Uh, how do you know you're having an asthma attack then? Well... Like, really how do you know when it's starting and stuff? Well, it can start with a runny nose or a cold or, uh, say, a viral infection. Oh, that's simple, eh? Yeah, well, I, I get it when I, ha when I have exercise. You can have exercise-induced asthma, it's called. Other signs are like wheezing or, uh, especially when you're breathing out, you might have a dry cough or you cough at night. Oh, Anatoly does that. He, he, he coughs a lot at night. <laughs> you know what happens when I get it as well as up just before exercise? My chest gets tired and my, my shoulders come up and I start to wheeze. When I'm having an attack, I'd be very tight in the chest, sometimes a little bit panicky, very wheezy, and then I'd have to use my puffer. Yeah, but uh, what can the doctor do, though? Well, he can prescribe these puffers that we have here. Now, first of all, we've got the Ventolin. Yes. This is what's called a reliever. So what do they do, though? The Ventolin is an immediate reliever of asthma, but doesn't uh, stop the cause of it, all right? Well, the relievers, like Ventolin, act on the muscle around the air tubes, and they cause them to relax, opening them up and making breathing easier. I use my reliever puffer, Ventolin, whenever I feel an attack coming on or I'm just about to train. By using that, 
it makes me breathe a lot easier. If I need my Ventolin, I just take that whenever I need it. So at the same time, you know, I was training and taking my medicine. The Ventolin gives you immediate relief from the symptoms of asthma, but doesn't treat the inflammation or the cause of your asthma. That's where we come to your ones, the preventers. Yeah. Now these are called, wait for it, inhaled corticosteroids. Ha! Ah, I could have told you that. <laughs> Ubiquitide and Beclafort puffers and other anti-inflammatory medications treat the inflammation and swelling and reduce the mucus buildup in your air tubes. This means that it will help control your asthma. Beclafort and Beclafort are not like Ventolin. You have to remember that it will take a couple of weeks before the inflammation and swelling in your air tubes is controlled. That's why it's important to take your Beccatide and Beclafort regularly, as your doctor says. I use my preventative puffer, Beccatide, every day to keep my asthma under control. Oh, so Beccatide and Beclafort keep your asthma under control. That's right. Am I getting this all right? Smart cooking. Yeah. Do, do asthmatics take both preventers and relievers? They do indeed. Um, I take a, um, a preventative um, uh, spray in the morning. Um, which is a, a Beclafort, and that's just mainly to to control or to make sure that I don't get attacks coming on, so that prevents the uh, the asthma. Whereas when I'm just about to play sport or, or during the day, I take a um, a reliever type spray, so I um, might have my Ventolin. How do you know your asthma is getting better or worse? Well, your doctor will help you out. He'll give you a peak flow meter, and what it is is a device to show how well your lungs are working. How does it work though? Show me. All right. Well, first of all, you start the indicator down on zero. Yeah. Right down there. Yeah. You uh, take a big breath in yeah. and you blow out really fast. Another, another thing is that you can call it a PFM for a short. PFM. PFM. Peak flow. A PFM. Peak flow meter. Ready? PFM. Ready? <laughs> that quick. And it's recorded on there. Now, to record it, you use an asthma record book. Your doctor will give you this. Oh, yeah. You okay? just mark the reading on your down chart. there. Okay. But do you do the best of three and take the reading? That's right. You use the best of three, you take your reading, and then you take your Ventolin. Ah. All right? Ah. And then five minutes later, you blow into the PFM again, like you did before, and you record the best of three readings as yeah. your second PF reading. Oh. Got that? Yeah, I've got that. I've got that. I, I understood all of that. It's not that complicated. You simply take a deep breath in, blow out into the PFM as fast as you can and you record the best of three readings on an asthma record chart. Then you take your Ventolin, five minutes later, blow into the PFM like you did before, and again record the best of three readings as your second PF reading. Now you should be doing this every morning and night, just like brushing your teeth. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, it can be fun. Yeah, but I don't brush my teeth. Why not? Can't you tell? Yeah, I can tell, it's smelly. <laughs> so Peter, these yeah. puffer things here, um, is it important you use them correctly? Of course, your doctor will show you how to use them correctly, but basically there's two ways of doing it, called the open mouth technique or the closed mouth technique. All right. And I'm going to show you some simple steps. Which okay. Which are those two, all right? Yeah. First of all, the closed mouth technique, which is one I use, yeah. I'll do it with the Ventolin, is take off... The cap. The cap. Don't forget to take the cap off. That's step one. Yeah, uh, shake it up again. Take your breath out. Put your head back so your windpipe's open and breathe in. Ready? Wait for a little while and then just breathe out normally. Ah, that gets it right down there. That's hey? right. Then you wait a minute and you take it again. And your doctor will show you how many times after that you, if you need to. Okay. okay. Open mouth technique, please, Open sir. Open mouth technique. Once again, cover off. All right. Don't forget to take the cap off. That's step one. I, Shake I, I, it up again. That's my step one. Take the cap off. Shake it up and down. Again, get ready to, to press down the metal canister. Hold it about two centimetres away from your open mouth. And breathe. All right. And then breathe out gently afterwards. You don't want to know, uh, you want to know a good way of doing this, a good method? Yeah. In front of a mirror. Like actors do. Yeah. Like they, they practice in front of a mirror. Do they? Frankly, Scarlett. I don't give a hoot. Very good. Thank you. Well, there might be actor asthmatics like me, yeah. and the reason we look in the mirror to do it with our asthma spray is to see if any mist escapes, so you know you're not doing it right. Okay? Ah, and you've got to because do it again. it's important to get the mist That's down right. there. Oh. Right. And and this, what is this big plastic right. thing? This thing that looks like a, a reject from a Tupperware party that yeah. we've been looking at is the volumatic spacer. 
not the volumetric space, space ah. Well, that's a trendy name. Right. Sounds like something out of Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, the reason for this is that we can get maximum benefit out of our inhalers. To get the most out of your prevented puffer becketide, you can use this spacer device. It fits together like this. And you shake your puffer, remove the dust cap off, put it to the end, breathe out, then pump the dose in and take a deep breath in, like this. And breathe out again. The volumatic has a one-way valve, so you can pump the dose in like this, breathe out, then breathe in like this. Yeah, but what's it good for? Well, it makes sure you get maximum benefit from the mist. So when you breathe that in, every particle of mist goes right into the deep parts of your lungs. Oh, and those big bits don't slam in the back of your throat. Well, that's right. <laughs> also, if you're using steroids, especially in young children, it uh, lessens the risk of uh, throat irritation. Yeah, but they're not like steroids like we've heard about sportsmen abusing. No, and stuff no, like no. That. These are not. St these are inhaled steroids. They're not like the steroids you've heard about that sportsmen have used. Oh, so they're good. That's right. Doesn't give you big muscles, but gives you a healthy lung. Oh, listen. If you have any questions about your medication or your asthma or something, uh, I guess you'd see your doctor, wouldn't of you? Of course. A doctor can provide you with an asthma action plan. The asthma action plan. Right. <laughs> that sets out exactly what you should do if your asthma gets worse. Oh, then you can control your asthma. Well, that's the important thing. You should control your asthma, not the other way around. It shouldn't control you. Good point, Pete. You're, you're scoring big points here. I'm catching up. I'm catching yeah. up. Now, your state asthma foundation, and there's one in every state, that can provide you with any information you need. Yeah, but Pete. Yep. Asthma and exercise, do they go together? Perfect blend. Do they? Yep. My favourite was swimming. That's the best one you can do. But uh, there's so many other sports that well, you, you, you shouldn't be stopped from doing just because of asthma. I had 13 good years here at Canterbury Bankstown and had the opportunity to play for my country. I even think my asthma helped me shape the player I was. So you too can live a normal life by taking your medication properly and exercising. It's not a bad incentive to live a long time. You know, having asthma doesn't stop you doing anything. You're just like any normal person. Uh, as long as I stay on the sprays and have my Ventolin um, or Relieve it before I play sport, uh, then I've got no problems whatsoever. Okay, let me pose this question to you. Okay, Gavin's on the field. Someone comes running towards him. He's got the ball. <laughs> Gavin's going, oh boy, is this a stressful situation? Is this a stress? Oh yeah, I'm getting stressed. I'm getting stressed. Hey, hey, hey. Does I've stress have anything to do with asthma? I've never seen Gavin Brown do that. Have you? But no, it doesn't. It's not good for it, and stress is not good for anyone in a health situation, but it's not directly affecting it. No. Okay, let me ask you this. Go. Okay, he's in the dressing room before the grand final. He goes, oh, I can see him. Oh, I've got to do Twinkle. I'm getting nervy. <laughs> oh, I've got to do Twinkle. Oh, there's 360,000 people out there. Oh, this is a nervy situation. Does nerves have anything to do with it? No, asthma is a physical condition. It's nothing to do with the, in the mind. Oh, All right. okay. So, Pete, you find out you've got asthma. What do you do then? Well, first of all, you pay as close attention to your doctor and you ask as many questions as you like. Uh, because the more you ask, the more you'll find out about the best way to control your asthma. That's right. And, and, and just because you have asthma doesn't mean to say you have to miss out on all the fun things everyone else is doing. That's right. You know, some of the gr Australia's greatest achievers are asthmatics. You've got uh, Des Renford, Susie Maroney. We met Gavin Brown. Alan Border, captain of the Australian cricket team. Asthmatic. Well, remember, taking care of yourself and knowing how to live with asthma is the first step to ensuring a healthy, normal life. That's right. And with proper management, there's no reason why asthma should stop you from becoming the next world champion. World champion. I'm going swimming Think right now. Think of it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to do um, backstroke. Backstroke, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Thanks yeah, for telling me all about the channel. He's crossing the channel. Thank Butterfly. You. Oh.